Hey, it's uh, Michael Lipinski again. Yes, so uh, using line-based detail components, we're going to continue on with uh, the detail components and annotating our designs. I'm eating at the end of the finger. I'm sorry, I apologize. Ah, I drink a lot of coffee. It's probably not good, but I guess it's better than drinking uh, Jack Daniels. When I was a, a younger man, I was very allergic. I used to break out in handcuffs. Anyway, those days are over. Thank the Lord for that, right? Thank the Lord for that. But, you know, they, uh, it happens. It happens. Well, I'm still here. You know, it's funny. You know, I'm back in Bayonne. And I don't see anyone. That I used to know. There's really not many, you know, not many people left. It's kind of sad. You know, I moved up to Lake Opacon. And uh, I loved it, right? But now that I'm home, and I, you know, I really was homesick. And I get back, and everyone's gone. You all move to the suburbs, and this and that. I don't know what is it about your hometown. I'm glad I moved back. I, I wish I still had the house in Lake Opacon. It's only going to be a summer house. I mean, after the fire, I only put R13 <laughs> in the building, so I can't imagine anyone spending a winter up in Lake Opacon. But again, I'm cheap. So in any event, we are going to be talking about drafting insulation in the next section, so I should bring that up. In any event, we've got to get back to embellishing these details. We've got to get back to embellishing these details. I can't wax nostalgic forever, but I can tell you story after story. I'd rather not tell you the horror stories. I'll try to keep those, you know, I'll take those to my grave because uh, some of those, those scars still, still run deep. And again, uh, still in recovery mode. Thank God uh, I didn't flash my BIOS in the interim. All right, so using line-based detail components, let me get this out of here. Although there isn't a command dedicated to line-based detail components, the ca this category of 2D elements can be quite powerful. As their name suggests, line-based detail components are 2D elements that behave like lines. Some examples of building elements you can illustrate with these components include waterproofing, gypsum board, plywood, and even repeating elements such as brick, which we discussed in the uh, earlier uh, exercise. Why would you use a line-based detail component for brick instead of a repeating detail component as we previously discussed? You can tag and schedule a line-based detail component. You can use any modifying commands on the line-based detail components such as trim, extend, and align, and that would be extremely helpful. In the default content library, you'll find components in the detail items folder such as gypsum wallboard, ridge insulation, and drainage board. Start the detail component command, click the load from library, and load a few of these families. In a detail view, practice drawing these elements to embellish the model's design further. So it doesn't really uh, go into it other than that. The book doesn't really go into that. But that's your homework, as is it is mine. But Prudence dictates that we at least take a peek, right? Let's take a peek. Um, hold on a second. Let me take off my tortoise shell for a second. Let me put on my script. Let's see. Give me a second. I'm going to keep my tortoise shell until I have my 36-inch uh, monitor. Hold on a second. I got rid of my monitor. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to take a peek at these. Uh, blah, blah, blah. In the default content library, we'll find them. So, uh, using a line-based detail component, right? So, hmm. repeating detail component. Although there isn't a command dedicated, this category of 2D elements can be quite powerful. As our name suggests, line-based detail components are 2D elements that behave like lines. Some examples include elements you can illustrate with these components include waterproofing, gypsum board, plywood, and even repeating elements such as brick. You can tag and schedule them. So, we can load them. Now, if indeed I go and put in a component, let's try just loading a component. Let's go to insert Let's go to load family, which allows us to load a family that isn't specific to a category, right? 
Let's go to detail items, if I can find it. And we, it says that we have some gypsum wallboard. So that would be, that would probably be thermal and uh, moisture protection. Um, that might not be that long. Hmm, green board would probably be there, and drainage board. But um, we may have to look through different directories. Let's take a look at thermal. Let's look at, um, let's take a look at thermal insulation for a second. Roof and deck, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Can't strip rigid, rigid, blah, 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 that's not what I'm looking for. Hold on. I'll get it eventually. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's not thermal, it's not, I mean, you can see, well, uh, well, it is gypsum, right? It's gypsum. Uh, I'll just, again, masonry, masonry, no, 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 not in that division. Uh, I should know this, right? We can't hire this guy. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know. Look, he's, he's, he's bumbling around. What does he know? Ah, uh, Division 9. Oops. Divide this, divide that. Indivisible. <laughs> With liberty and justice for all. All right, so we have a lathe, just some plastering, Portland cement plastering. Oh, God. Can you imagine doing that for a living? Portland cement. I can't do it. I can't. I've tried sheetrock once before. Oof. I butchered it. I am, don't put the stilts on me, man. That's a that's an art in and of itself. I cannot place sheetrock. Holy cow! Thought I could when I was younger, but then again, when you're a kid, you think you can do anything. Anyway, let, let's leave that to the pros, shall we? Let's uh, take a look at some gypsum plastering. Absolutely not. Gypsum board will be the key here. Um, inside, so these are all the profiles. Right. Yeah, this is uh, this is fantastic, right? All of this. I just browse through. Browse through. So powerful. So powerful. Again, any any engineer, any any carpenter, any any of the tradesmen, any guy that's any guy or gal likes to hang out in their garage, right? What else we got here? Drainage board. Let's just take a peek through some of the uh, some of these detail kind of components. Corner guard flush. Cranes and hoists. Utilities, some drainage, trench drain, all good stuff. French drains, we got good stuff here. Exterior improvements, rigid paving, business concrete section, openings. Okay, so before we go uh, ballistic on all this, we can spend all day looking through the aisles at Home Depot, right? I sometimes I go down and just walk around. So, let's not uh, go off on a tangent. Drafting insul insulation. The best way to think of the insulation tool is as a pre-made repeating detail. You'll find this tool on the detail panel of the annotate tab. Selecting this tool, and we've, I've shown you this, allows you to draw a line of bat insulation, much like a repeating detail. Okay, so yeah, in the, uh, let me get back to uh, annotate and you can see insulation. Insulation places a bat insulation graphic in a detailed view. You can adjust the width and length of the insulation and resize the bulge between the insulation lines. When selecting the insulation tool, you can modify the width of the inserted insulation from the options bar on the properties or the properties palette. In the properties palette, you can also control the insulation bulge to width ratio, which adjusts the amount of curve of the insulation. The default value is 2. By default, insulation is inserting using the center line of the line of bat, but you can control the offset in the options bar once the tool is activated. You can also modify the width either before or after inserting insulation into your view. Let's continue to embellish the wall section view in the C17 sample building RVT or its metric equivalent from the book's companion website. 
excuse me, follow these steps to begin adding insulation detail components. From the annotate tab in the ribbon, click the insulation tool in the options bar, set the width value to five. Width value to five. Tab. Or 150 millimeters, and the offset to zero, which it's already set to. Now note there's a radio button for chain. Um, offset zero to center, so now, we have almost like a justification, just like in uh, Microsoft Word, right? To near side to far side. We'll go through them. Uh, you can customize the offset value depending on how you'd like to stretch the insulation by drawing the line representing the center of the insulation or either edge. So center, if we were to go uh, in the framing, you'll see it comes down to here. Let me cancel out of that. Now let's do it again. Let's do... Uh, it's probably, it's all, it's all going to be based on the grip. And in the family, if you remember, the insertion point is important. Let's grab it. it, it this is a parameter that was added to this family that allows you the, uh, the ability to select these different options. So now it's going to be from the near side. Well, that's uh, a little bit perplexing to me because I'm thinking, okay, well, this is near, far. Uh, well, here's I, me picking at center that's considered the near side or the top of the bulge. So that makes sense. Even though I, I clicked from center, now it becomes evident that you would need then to invoke that tool to the near side, then click on the inside of the interior sheetrock. Um, or wall finish, wall furring material, whatever it is that they use for that. But like I said, it doesn't have to be sheetrock. But I, I don't necessarily feel that five inches is filling the cavity. But then again, we could probably just spray this in as foam instead of using bat insulation. Lots of different insulation, not necessarily just bat insulation, right? Now, well, let's take a look at the far side. Let's take a look at the far side. Insulation. Let's take a look at the far side. Center. Far side. I'm going to assume that I pick it here. And that's what's going to happen. All right, so at least we can tell the difference. And again, Carpenter or someone that actually places this in um, would, uh, would know better than, again, it's a collaborative effort. I don't know your job. You don't know mine. <laughs> but we need each other. We're married. It's, we're, we're attached at the hip, whether you like it or not. And, and what about all these HIPAA privacy laws? You, I'm so exposed. I'm so overexposed. We're joined to the hip. All right, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. You can customize the offset, right? You can customize the offset. So let's do that. Let's offset this. Depending on how you would like to sketch the insulation by drawing the line representing the center of the insulation or either edge. So, again, let's just mess around here. If I was to say um, two inches as an offset, and I was to use center, well, that's to center, yet two inches offset. Now, that meant that the center, let's, let's take a look if it has a location line. It really doesn't have a location line, but if we look, it's, it's 3 and 33, 128 from what appears to be the center to the brick facade. Now, Again, if I can measure this, I really can't catch the center of it, but let's see here. Two inches brings us about here, and then two inches, it's, this is the uh, offset right here, I believe. Yeah, that's going to be kind of tricky to uh, ascertain, because you can't, you don't see a location line of this insulation. All right, so here's what we'll do. We'll take this, and this is how you can um, accomplish the same thing. Insulation width, insulation bulge to width ratio, but doesn't give me the availability to change the offset value once it's placed. So, so let's just make a note of that. Let's just undo this. Let's go back to insulation. Let's go to center. We're going to say two inches offset. Let's go negative two inches now. And let's contrast it. Let's contrast that. And let's bring it to the center again. And notice that it flips to the other side. Now, that two inch offset, is it beyond the extents of the framing? Is it beyond the extents of the finish interior? Beyond the extents of the next membrane? Again, I, I have to err on the side that that's, that's a yes. 
So I'm just going to try to, you know, it won't let me get this grip, enable 3D grips. Well, I can't do it with the measure tool. Maybe I can do it with the align dimension tool. Nope, can't do it there. So I can do it with the linear tool. Can't do it there. Let me see if I can just um, do what maybe somebody else can do better than me. Can I draw a detail line? No. I may be able to draw a detail line, get it close, come out here. That's one inch. Well, that's an inch and a quarter. So let's try that again. Repeat detail line. From here, out here, is one and three quarters. That's not two inches. I need to see where the two inch variable is. Where they measure the two inch variable. It doesn't give me. You can customize the offset value depending on how you would like to sketch the insulation by drawing the line representing the center of the insulation or either edge. Well, this grip is what is um, is what's throwing me off. If I could measure, let me lock this. Let me make this a permanent dimension for a second. Let me make this a permanent dimension. Now, let me see something. That's two and a half. And that's two and change, but it's not exactly two. Two is there. Ah, okay. Okay. So it's two inch it's two inches from where you select it to the center of the bat. Now if it was to the edge of that, let's undo this. Let's undo this. Now let's draw some insulation again. Now let's stay with the negative two inches. Negative two inches. And let's go to uh, to near side and pick it to the center. Ah, okay. So now let's just get it down to here. And let's just get a quick measurement from the center of the sill to here. That's four and a half, three, two. Near side. I believe it's right there. There it is. There's your two inches. The near side. I'm off by 100, 128 bits. I'm off by 128 bit encryption. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how numbers don't lie, right? 128, 256. Scale factor. Scale factor. Standard annotation scaling parameters also applies to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Sometimes, right off the bat, when I go to a coordination meeting and I'm coordinating with a mechanical contractor and he or she has an attitude problem, the first thing I like to ask them is if their variable air volume controllers have been approved by the engineers yet. And usually they look at me with a kind of perplexed understanding and they don't know what I'm talking about. What I'm really meaning is what well, they should mind their manners. That's what they should be doing. That's why I usually ask them that question in, you know, passing. So you should really control your variable air uh, volume controller. You really should. In any of it. We've got that down. Within the wall assembly, hover the mouse pointer at the midpoint of one of the nominal wood framing detail components you placed previously in the chapter. Use the midpoint snaps of the framing components to set the start point and end point of the insulation component. Continue to add insulation components in the remaining wall floor and roof structure layers in the detail view. Okay, so let's just uh, go back to uh, insulation. Center, five inch, and let's just go from center to center to here. And now, does insulation trim? I'm not sure if it trims. Uh, I'm not sure if this trims. And I'm not 100% sure if this. I want to connect these. Now, the section is it going? Th it's going through a window. It's going through a window here, and it's going through the framing here, window here, framing here. But now we're looking at. Oops, let me pick this. We're looking at that wall. If I click that wall in section, you can see that um, indeed it's 
cutting. Through, this is the. Um, let's look at the the uh, bounding box of the wall section. Well, he's cutting here, and this is the extents of the box. Yes. Yeah, so then, if I expanded this out to the left, you would see that entire bounding box. All right. So yeah, it's cutting through the window. So. Um, Continue to add insulation components to the remaining wall, floor, and roof structure. Well, I don't have that luxury right now. So I'm not going to really concern myself with it right now. Anyway, moving on to creating detail groups. Detail groups are similar to blocks in AutoCAD and are a quick alternative to creating detail component families. They are collections of 2D graphics and can contain detail lines, detail components, or any other 2D elements. You will probably want to use a detail component to create something like wood blocking. However, if you plan to have the same configurations of wood blocking in multiple locations, you can then group these con those configurations and quickly replicate them in other details. As with blocks in AutoCAD, manipulating one of the detail groups will change all of them consistently. There are two ways to make a detail group. The more common one is to create the detail elements you like to group. Select all of them and then click the Create Group button in the Create tab of the Contextual tab of the ribbon. You, when you're prompted for a group name, use a naming convention that will help you organize and recognize the contents of each group rather than accept the default name, Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, and so on. The other way to create a detail group is by clicking the Create Group button in the Detail Group flyout on the Annotate tab. You'll then be prompted for the type of group, model or detail, and a group name before you can select any elements of the group. If you are working in a drafting view, you can only create a detail group, obviously. The model option is inactive. Two ways. So then co collect them. And they're saying um, if it was like a blocking uh, scenario. Let's uh, think of the scenario where that would be the case. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, let's think of below the window, right? Below the window is a blocking between the uh, framing uh, um, window frame, right? And uh, there would be blocking underneath the sill. So if we were look at this in depth, we'd have a scenario where, where there was blocking. So if I had a section looking um, this way, hold on, I want a section if I had a section looking, there's no windows on this wall, but there is over here. So if I was to create a section, right? If I was to go to view, section, and if I was to maybe click right here, let's go right to there, and just drag this at the far end over to here. Go to view. Let's take a look here. Well, there it is, but um, it's cut plane isn't what I want. Hold on. Not a problem. Not a problem. I want this right. Oh, I gotta read the cut up. Ooh, excuse me. Right there. And then go back to the view. Let me take a look at this as, as fine. See what we got. Mm, I really don't have the framing that um, I was looking for. I thought I would see all of the, the uh, well, the type this yeah this this isn't going to give me what I wanted what I what I thought was I'll get all the framing members in between and you can you can create the wood frame construction stick frame construction um, to show every framing member you want hip valley uh, lintel uh, sill uh, joist you name it um, ridge ridge joist all those things um, but again you can create that in a wall type right. So to show every individual framing member. And then what I would say was I would create a detail group that would create the blocking underneath here. So I can still do it in this view, I believe, right? I can still embellish this view. Um, we could use a certain, uh, we may have those components loaded. So let's go to, uh, to annotate. And again, this may not be the exact uh, example that is uh, best for this, but let's just give it a go. Let's go to a component. Let's go to detail component. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got some, some framing members, right? We got a one by four, but this is gonna be, um, remember how it's cut. We really need this to be cut in its height on its edge, not looking at it from the same way we're looking at this one. Um, so that's gonna cause a problem for us, but let's just go, let's just go with a, a two by four. And you see, obviously it's, I can't look at it 
the other way. But let's just create a, a blocking scenario. We can at least create a detail group because that's what um, it wants us to do. So I'm just going to create underneath this here. I'm just going to create a, a couple of these. Okay, I mean, just bear with me. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's just get some blocking um, onto here to give it some uh, semblance of a detail group. So now we have these, and we could do one of two things. We could select it all. Right? Oop, shit. Oops. I want to uh, make this not selectable. It's going to come back to haunt me. I can grab it this way. I'm going to grab these. Boom. And uh, you'll see there is right here. Is it group? There it is. Create group. Now hold that thought. There are two ways. The more common one is to create the detail elements you'd like to group, select, them, select all of them, then click the Create Group button in the Create tab of the contextual tab of the ribbon. When you're prompted for a group name, use a naming convention that will organize and recognize the contents of each group rather than accept the default name. So, um, Joyce Stiffener. Again, you create, you know, Stiffeners, right? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, the other way to create the detail group is by clicking the Create Group button of the Detail Group flat on the Annotation tab. So if we go to Annotate, Annotate, uh, Detail, Create Group, whereas I'm looking right at it, Detail Group, Place or Create, the same command, Create, Group 1, we can change it to be whatever we want, but let's just take a look at this, Detail Group, Place, are there any already in here? There are no detail groups in this project or family. Damn, would not be helpful. All right, in any event, um, let's see how much more goes into it before we've already, so we don't waste too much time. And it doesn't look like it's really uh, that much more than that. So, um, yeah. Again, that's going to be very, very helpful to you if you use details constantly over and over and over again. And then if it's something that is going to change it, at least view or actually project wide, changing the detail group will have an impact on every instance of that uh that insertion of that, that detail group, just like in, um, in, um, in AutoCAD, right? Just like in AutoCAD. And that goes for bathrooms, right? You can create an entire, as a matter of fact, it goes for buildings. <laughs> you, I mean, you can create a group uh, of, of anything. If you, you constantly use the same thing over and over and over again, right? You can create a group out of it. And then if you have to change it, in, uh, change it once, not 20 million times. Anyway. You delete that. All right, so I guess you get the gist of it, right? You get the gist of it. Detail components and project templates. If you find you're inserting the same detail components over and over again, load them into your project templates and make them readily available when you begin any new project. Well, that goes without saying, because we just found that out the hard way. I need more coffee. 948, I'm still going. But I, I checked my uh, symptoms. I got plenty of sleep. I took a nap. You name it. So, uh, again, if you love what you do, you're never going to work a day in your life. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Adding detail components to families. In this chapter, you have read about the number of ways you can embellish a 3D model with 2D detailing. We have discussed how to add detail elements as needed in the project environment, but you can also add you can also include 2D elements inside families. The possible now, let's just stop for a second. I'm going to flip backwards and reiterate something that um, I'm going to go back into my ROM and I'm going to just reread something that we talked about early on in this. Uh, here we go. Working with the detail process, the detailing process, standalone detailing, beginner hybrid detailing, intermediate, model detailing, advanced. The most complex approach to detailing can also be the most efficient. Once you become familiar with creating families and customizing your project templates, the approach we prefer to as model detailing still involves the use of some detail components. However, they are embedded into model elements where applicable. For example, in a wood frame structure, detail elements such as sill plates, studs, joists, or anchors can be embedded in wall type definitions. The details will display automatically when the walls are displayed in the section detail view. That's extremely powerful. You won't see them in the model. Then you won't see them in the model. But the minute you create a, a section detail view, they'll appear. Think about that. That's amazing, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. 
Now, that's exactly what this is about to say, more complex for sophisticated firms. <laughs> in any event, before I get belligerent. Yeah, in this chapter, we have read about the number of ways you can embellish a 3D model with 2D detailing. Uh, possibilities for the, the possibilities for this method are almost limitless. You can add any kind of symbolic lines to 3D families, but in this section, we will focus on nesting a detail component in a profile family, which will then become the basis for the curtain wall mullions in the sample project. Oh boy, I'm going to need coffee for this. Back to curtain walls. Oh, back to curtain walls. Continue working with the C17 sample building architecture, the metric equivalent that we've downloaded. Uh, project browser, locate and activate section view, uh, named section at curtain wall. Let's close all these families, collapse that, collapse uh, that, we'll keep the views open. Uh, at curtain wall, section at curtain wall. We sure do have a lot of windows open. WT, ZA, I think this is it here. Activate curtain at section, uh, section at curtain wall. Go back to view, and um, tab, close and active. ZA, let's get a fresh start. I really should uh, brush up on my shortcuts. I may have to hang them on the cubicle. I know it's a pet peeve of mine, but I'm going to maybe have to do that. But here we go at the curtain wall. Now, there's the location line, the curtain wall. Remember that? How we talked about all that, all those parameters with the curtain wall and all these um, values that we can uh, change. This is a very, very, very nice curtain wall. Some of the tight marks aren't there, blah, 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 another Kobe compliance. But again, we went into this in relatively deep um, discussion about creating these. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, if you remember that, that was kind of perplexing, right? So now that we have this uh, section of curtain wall open um, in the project browser, expand the families branch, locate and expand the profiles branch, and then click uh, PR Mullion horizontal or PR Mullion uh, metric. Choose Edit from the Context menu, and the Mulligan Profile family will open. Again, you may not see this because of my head, but if we go down here, and we look at, uh, let's see here, blah, 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 blah. Curtain Wall Mullions. Now, just give me a second here. It's supposed to be in the Profiles branch. So, ah, because it's right. It's right, swept. Right, so, blah, 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 Profile branch. There we go. You may not be able to see this because it's very low on the directory tree. It's very low on the directory tree. Uh, profiles branch, pr, uh, PR Mullion horizontal. And that's exactly what it is that it wants us to open, right? Choose edit from the context menu. Well, hold on a second. Okay, so now we're in the family, we're in the, the Mullion family. Um, PR Mullion Horizontal RFA, right? It's not RVT, it's not RTE, it's an RFA. And again, you see center Mullion, curtain panels are trimmed to where the profile sketch intersects the center front back reference plane, center front back reference plane, uh, the width, and these probably, yep, and these are uh, parameters. As you see, we have one, two, three, four parameters here. We have a center line to back equals depth Center line to front, center line to front, depth and width. And you can see they're all labeled. Now, the basic reference planes and profile lines have already been created. You should already have downloaded the RFA files included with this chapter's exercise files. Among them are a series of detailed components that represent the internal extrusion details of the mulligans in the sample project's curtain wall system. From the Create tab, click the Detail Component command. Browse to the location where you downloaded this chapter's exercise files and load the file named Cornier 1600 System 1 Horizontal or Cornier 1600 Horizontal uh, Metric. Hold on a second. It's 
should have already been loaded, they said, right? So, um, well, hold on, before I load them, before, hold on, so we're, we're not even in the, uh, we're not even in the family anymore. Before I load it into project, hold on a second. Um, shit, I just, I, you know, I, I can't undo it, I just loaded it into the project. I can override it. Um, now, what I wanted to see was if it was already loaded in here. Just give me a second here. I want to go to, um, give me a moment, detail component. Okay, they're not there, so that's okay. We know where they are. They're in uh, my computer. They're in the D drive. They're in uh, Mr. Lipinski's. Uh, no, that's not where they are. Not Mr. Lipinski's. They're up here. This is upside down. They're this way. They are in the... This should be detailing. Let's see. Here they are. Corner System 1 Head. Corner System 1 Horizontal. Corner System 1 Sill. So it wants us to load um, 1600 System 1, the head. So here it is, and it's very, very highly detailed. And these mullions really are. These glazers, I give them a lot of credit. It's a science, man. It's such a science. Look at the detail on this sill, uh, on this mullion. Now this is just a 2D profile, right? And that's going to be um, extruded. But do you need that level of detail in the model? No. You need the level of detail in the detail. So this is where um, you uh, can utilize uh, and speed up your process. All right, so we have the cornier uh, system one horizontal in. Place the detail component to fit exactly within the profile boundary. Okay, well, let's see here. Again, this is the cent uh, center line to back. So I have to rotate this this way. The, what's that? There's this two pieces that this is broken up into. And I believe that goes that way. That's why I rotated it. There's a name for the back and there's a name for the front. So now that that detail's in there, I believe it's in there correctly. Um, let me just make sure it is. It appears to be. It appears to be. This, I believe, is going to be the location line of the mullion. And then the, uh, yeah, the location line. All right, so let's just hold that out and see if I did it right. Now, we place this detail component to fit exactly within the profile boundary, nested family within a family. You may need to rotate the component before placing it by pressing the space bar. The result should look like the image in figure 17.28. Well, hold that thought for a second. Center line to back, four and a half inches. Center, yeah, I have it right. I'm just there's some extra lines here on the on the the model the the text that I just want to double check I did it right. Okay, so it's in there, and I believe it's correct. It doesn't look very centered though, does it? But then this um, what? There's a little extra piece here. It is what it is for now. I'm just going to hold that thought. I'm not going to overthink that. But uh, it does look a little bit out of whack. Uh, but then again, that's the family that told us to load. So um, it's in. Um, click the modify button and then select the detail component you just placed in the view. Get out of that. Select it. Make sure I got it, right? Corner 1600 system head. All right, now, from the contextual tab in the ribbon, click Visibility Settings. In the Family Element Visibility Settings dialog box, uncheck the Coarse and Medium Settings. The only setting that should be checked is Fine. Click OK to close the dialog box. So, within the view for this particular family, go to Visibility Graphics, and I... Don't see visibility settings. Hold on a second. Not visibility graphics, visibility settings. What am I doing? Select it. Visibility settings, not visibility graphics. Visibility settings within the context 
of selecting it within a contextual toolbar, visibility settings opens up. Now, visibility settings specifies the views and detail levels for displaying family geometry in a model. When an element is created by a family, the geometry of the element changes depending on the current view. In a plan or elevation view, you may want to see a 2D representation of the element. In a 3D view, you may want to a fully detailed 3D representation of the element. We talked about that. Perfect example of the receptacle, the 1900 box. In plan, it looks like the symbol. In 3D or elevation, it looks like the actual box. And it's the same concept, I believe. So specifies the views and detail levels for displaying family geometry in a model. And this is going to actually apply to a fine detail and medium, but um, let's see if it is view specific. Um, in, if we can control it in every single aspect. When an element is created by a family, the geometry of the element changes depending on the current view. In a plan or elevation view, you may want to see a 2D representation of the element. In a 3D view, you may want a fully detailed 3D representation of the element. So, now that we have that selected, it says that in the uh, click the visibility settings, and we'll probably have a dialog box. And we do. Coarse, medium, and fine. Now, detail levels is saying that we are to, in the family element visibility settings dialog box, uncheck the coarse and medium settings. Uncheck them. So it's going to d display as fine. The only setting that should be checked is fine. Click OK to close the dialog box. Click the load into project. Overwrite the existing version and its parameters. I did it twice. You cancel. Now it's in the project. We haven't placed it yet, right? We haven't really done anything. But if the modeling does exist, it's going to display that way, I believe. Let's see what the display is here. And there it is. It won't display in coarse or medium. It'll only display in fine in section view. So hold that thought. Let me just double check the location line, make sure. Yes, yeah, so the location line is correct. All right now. Uh, yeah, blah blah blah. From the view tab in the button, click the uh, from the view tab in the button. Locate the create panel. Yeah, well, I'm not in the. Let's make me go back to the family. Um, from the view tab in the ribbon, locate the create panel and click call out rectangle. <laughs> That's not what that meant. We're in the project. And sometimes it likes to refer to the create panel, the create tab, as the architecture tab. Sometimes. So you got to kind of like really make sure you're not getting misled here. Now, we should be in the project, you know, we just loaded it in. I can't imagine we're going back into the family re editing it. Let me just make sure that uh, this is, uh, I'm doing the right thing here. Okay, so, so for, from the view, Oh, from the create panel. Yeah, that's why. You gotta pay attention, Mike. Hold on. Senior moment. And click call out rectangle. Call out rectangle. Okay, uh, sketch rectangle in the morning near the top of the floor associated with level two. Okay. Double click the call out head to activate the call out view in the properties palette or the view control bar. Change the view scale to three inch equals a foot and set detail level to fine. And so from the top of the floor, I don't like this over here for starters. It should be over there. All right, so there it is. I could go and, um, you know, it says in, in Revit 2020, you double click this, but sure as shit doesn't work for me. <laughs> Maybe it's because I have to click the damn bubble. No, that's not going to do it either. I'm so stuck right now, I was clicking it. What am I missing with this particular tool? Double click the call out head. Okay, well, here's the call out head. I double clicked it, and I get the edit call out head. I'm not going to do that that way. I have to right now, just click it and go to view. And sure as shit says that you do it that way. Excuse my French. All right, so here we are. Here's a call out view again. The call out view detail level is different than the parent um, section that we're denoting. In the, if you look at the detail, and this, they go into this a little bit, far clip settings, same as parent view, right? Show in parent view only. So um, dependency, independent. Now, if you go to the actual call out and you 
look at the view properties of the call out, section wall call out, show in parent view only, show as parent view. There's some things that you could do. You can make this independent or dependent upon the view that you extracted it from. So it doesn't really get into that just yet, but just know that um, there's just so many ways you can control this to display it the way you want. And I'm going to stop for a second because in AutoCAD MEP and Auto, AutoCAD Architecture, actually in AutoCAD MEP, which is built on top of the AutoCAD Architectural Engine anyway, there is a way to display by <coughs> display by elevation. And there's, there's ways to screen and, and all those things and, and display by the distant, uh, different var varying disciplines. And it can be done, and, and it's intuitive, and, and within the Project Navigator environment, uh, it, it becomes a very powerful tool as well. And I'm not going to trash it all the way, but I'll be honest with you. I've worked in AutoCAD many, many, many years, uh, not in an architectural environment, but in an electrical environment where I had to actually struggle to get it to do what I wanted it to do. But I could have utilize the power of the fact that it can display by elevation uh, and it has similar um, to having some display control that's automated but it's no way as powerful as this. This was designed to replace it. It was designed to replace it but remain interoperable with it because it's in the market and people are using it so it has to work that way. Again, I go from a tangent but um, I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to actually go back and, and try to um, document, or video document, um, the AutoCAD MEP. And the only reason I'm, I'm thinking about doing it is just so that if I have to take a job doing it, then I have uh, some, you know, I practice. Because this is a practice. It's a practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, so, yeah, so double click the call out head to activate the call-out view in the properties palette or the view control bar at three inches equals a foot. <clears throat> and is it loaded? Yeah, good. Okay, three inches equals a foot. So, again, it'll do the math. When this is on the sheet, it's going to be huge, right? If we had a sheet, I could show you. Because details are supposed to be that big, inch and a half, three inch. You're not going to see it. That's why they call them details. Well, there actually is a sheet. Let's see if I can... There's a sheet. Let's take a look. Let's throw this puppy on there. Uh, what do we call it? Section of curtain wall. It's dragging on the sheet. And there's a, it's at three inches. I'm not too happy with the location of uh, the... Uh... Anyway, I'm not going to play with this. Just I, I wanted to move that. But uh, I'm just going to uh, undo that. It's on the sheet. Now it's not. Now it is. Now, it'll update on the sheet based on the detail. You don't got to you know, go back and forth. Right, so there it is at three inches. But look how much paper it takes up, right? That's a lot. You know, it's funny. When I was in the... Uh, when I was taking direction from some of these engineers and drawing things for them, they knew everything except for how much stuff they wanted on the paper. You know, they couldn't grasp the concept that the paper's only so big. I mean, it's huge because it's scaled, but, you know, there, there's an area of paper, and, and for some reason it just wouldn't register. And, and all they would do is and just insist, I want to see this, I want to see this, I want to see this. I'm sitting there going, you know, how much real estate you think you have, dude? Some, sometimes it just it goes beyond the realms of understanding. And they profess to just they walk around strutting their shit. Anyway, I'm not going to go off on a uh, tangent, but there is only so much real estate on a piece of paper. Okay, so, unless you change the scale, and then when you change the scale, oh, well, that line's too small, I can't see it detailed enough. Sorry, Jesus. So you want me to change the scale factor? Yeah. You know, the papers are only going to get so big, it's like... All right, now, I'm sorry. We'll get into sheets soon, and we're going to get into sheet sets, and we're going to get into publishing and batch plotting, right? Batch plotting. So opening a drawing, plotting it. Opening a drawing, plotting it. We need to all that automated things. Anyway, so again, I'm going off on a tangent because you can see the end is in sight. Yeah, after you make these changes, you will see the nested detail component appear the, uh, in the curtain wall mullion. Well, we have to, of course, turn on the detail level. But we, 
we saw that because I jumped ahead of the step. All right, now, repeat the steps in this exercise for the head and sill mullion families. Edit the profile families listed here. Starts with PR mullion with associated detailed components, RFA files, or their metric equivalents, cornea, cornea 1600, system one head, system one sill. Okay, now, repeat that. This detail doesn't have that one. It has it here, and it has it here. Well, okay, I can do it here. Let's do it here. So we have to then go and load those two families in. But before we do that, we have to uh, go back and set them, right? We have to set the uh, family to have those profiles in it, right? Isn't that the step? We have to go back and um, repeat the steps in the exercise. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, that's something for you and I to do. The detailed components we used for this sample exercise were excerpt excerpted from real manufacturer's content that is available for free from the Cornier website, cornier.com. Complete curtain wall system components for Revit are also available from the website. You might have noticed that the curtain wall model modeled in this chapter sample building is somewhat simplified. For example, the portion of the glass panels inside the mullions is not modeled. However, this condition appears in the detail component once you get down to a fine level of detail. This exercise illustrates a hybrid approach to the balance between modeling and detailing. If you download one of the Revit models from the corner of your website, one example, ASCMDDH3A.DWG is provided with this chapter's downloaded content, you'll see that the glass panels are more accurately modeled to include the mullion bite. In that scenario, you would, need, you would not need to include masking regions to simulate the glass panel in the mullion detail component. All right, now, I'm not a glazier, but uh, this happens in a team environment. You need to surround yourself with people that are knowledgeable in all of these areas. Uh, first of all, I don't know everything. I just wanted to stress that because uh, we'll come to the end and, um, you know, I, I don't want to pat myself too hard on the back. Learning efficient detailing. As you get more practice creating details in Revit, you'll find certain workflows support more flexibility and speed. Here are some tips to keep in mind when creating your details. <sighs> Excuse me. If your modeling is reasonably detailed to begin with, the detailing will go much faster because you will need to add fewer components. However, you must strike a balance and not make an overly detailed model because that would negatively impact performance. The overly impact performance. You know, I'm going to end this video on a note that I um, saw today and I wanted to share this with you because I found it to be uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty profound, if you don't mind. Just let me um, read something to you. And again, I may be plagiarizing a little bit, but your project is a big deal. You know, building a commercial project is an enormous investment. You need striking aesthetics, but you need so much more. Strategic planning match, you know, maximizes every square inch. Cost-effective plans that support not derail your budget. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's a passage here that I found to be uh, very, very uh, interesting because of salesmen. This corner website was what made me think about it. Excuse me, just give me a second here. Yeah. We're not here to win awards, impose our style, 
or approach your project with preconceived ideas. We will never push frills that inflate your costs or waste your space. The only thing driving us is your needs, your business, and your long-term success. Avoid expensive long-term mistakes. Design decisions affect your monthly costs for years to come. We design with your future in mind, taking into account first and life cycle costs. Anyway, I want to end it on there because I found it to be profound and I wanted to share that. All right, so that is a, uh, a general uh, overview of um, detailing with the, uh, the detail components. Now, we ain't done yet. Um, we're going to be getting into utilizing some of the, the CAD, some legacy details that you may have been spending years drawing, right? <laughs> you have a library in your, in your firm that has got a plethora of details that you use over and over and over again, and there's absolutely no reason to hire someone to come in and read it and redraw them. And if you decide that uh, if someone convinces you of that, then shame on them. But again, I wouldn't, I, well, I wouldn't want you to fall victim of that. I wouldn't want you to fall victim of that. So um, we're going to be getting into, the, into AutoCAD uh, interoperability in the next video. I hope you enjoy the video.